Hello, good morning or good afternoon, depending on your time zone right now. I am Bonnie Guerrero, the head of the legal department of the Dominican Republic Film Commission. Welcome to this patient sessions on Dominican projects. As we say, it's really very easy to film in the paradise and we want you to join our Dominican producers with their projects. Today, we will have nine pitches and each producer will have five minutes to pitch the project and some of them will have seven minutes. We will have a Q&A with two questions per project. And if you have additional questions, then we will give you the contact of the producer so you can send them uh, your questions and also we will send all your questions to the producer in order to you have a direct contact with them. So our first project and pitching today is the project Posada by Giselle Joaquin Mena. Giselle? Hi and welcome. My name is Paola Ivar. I'm the co-writer and producer of Posada alongside with Giselle Joaquin Mena and Angelina Villanueva who is our director. We would like to thank you for allowing us the opportunity to share with you our project. So Posada is a 90-minute drama fiction film that takes place in a small family-owned hotel in the Dominican Republic. It tells the story of tourists with immeasurable separate life that collide in interwaving stories of defeat and redemption. During the film, we discover the life of seven guesses. A 73-year-old Dominican widow that gets kicked out of her own house and will do whatever it takes. It will do whatever it takes to get it back. A French documentary filmmaker that never finishes his work but finds instead he's in love with his assistant. A successful American lawyer driven by materialistic pleasures gets confronted with the emptiness he has within. A rebellious Costa Rican girl that have never met her biological father and is still looking for him. A Kurdish S warrior against the Islamic State, troubling with really violent nightmares and her only escape is her French girlfriend and her guitar. And last, a drunk Bolivian S Fark that has no guerrilla and a Jewish writer that has no inspiration to finish his novel. Thank you, and I leave it off to Ajerin. Thank you, Paola. I am Ajerin, the director of Posada. I want to work on an aesthetic and it's an scene that I have already applied in other projects using elements such as natural lighting, steady cam, sequence shots, and paintings that fulfill a semiotic function. The film goes from shadow to light, representing how the characters find redemption, both the town where the story takes place and the actors uh, have their own, own identity expressed through sound. Uh, noises give meaning to the film. For this reason, the film progresses from noise to silence with a specific passages of Dominican music. Um, let me share with you one scene from one of my previous shorts where I applied this proposal. Tengo que ir porque tengo que bretear. Pero veámonos en Chepe después cuando yo salgo. ¿Ok? Es que le quiero enseñar el lugar.
Thank you, Ajerin. So, and she's a working man now. Our project is currently in the development stage, and we are looking for a co-production that will allow us to apply to European and Latin American fund, as well as this film distribution in these markets. We have ensured 22% of our total budget, which is $529,000. Posada has worn several hours, shot as the development fund in the Dominican Republic, now some from Brazil. It also participated in the Latin American Focus Malaga Film Festival, the Dominican Film Lab, the production market among the Dominican Republic, Cuba, and Puerto Rico. So we will be thrilled to talk to you more about Posada. And hopefully work together. Let's meet and see you soon. Thank you. Bye bye. Well, thank you, Giselle. I don't know if you if you have if you want to add something more. In a few seconds. If you have any questions, we are, we are open to any questions. Yeah. Well, we don't have questions now. You can ask the questions in our chat. And well, now we will continue with our next participant. Thank you, Giselle and Paola and Ayerim. Our next participant is the project uh, 15 hours or 15 horas by Judith Colel, who is with us today. And she will have also a video with your presentation. Uh, so it's your time, Judith. Thank you, Moni. Hi, good morning, good afternoon. Depends where you are. For me, it's good afternoon. My name is Judith Colel, and I'm the director of 15 Hours. Uh, our film is now in post-production. We shot it in Santo Domingo last November. And, uh, 15 hours for what? Let's see. Let's see this fragment from the beginning of the film that will give you some answers.
escape from the abuse, from the mistreatment. We need to talk about gender violence because unfortunately it's in our life every day. Every day 155 women dies, every year 50,000 women dies in the hands of their husbands, boyfriends. So we need to talk about this. And what is the difference? The difference is that we will talk about the, 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 the abuse in the high classes. They are using these people who have power, who have money, uh, who have culture, who, have, who are very sensitive. These two main characters, they work in music. And also to talk about the abuse in the Caribbean. In this beautiful Caribbean, in this beautiful Dominican Republic, where we, when we think about the Dominican Republic, we only think about paradise. For our main character, for Aura, her life, it's hell. And uh, we will follow her for uh, 15 hours, where she will try to find help from her mother, her priest, her best friend. And all the answers are no, because these women in high class that suffers abuse have uh, always the same answer. Why are you complaining if you live like a queen? For me, it was a big opportunity when Stalin Ramirez and Red Bautista um, proposed me to do this thing. I hope you liked it and that you have questions, you can, I will be very, very happy to answer it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Judith. Uh, just a reminder to, to the panelists, please keep your mic in, in mute because we can have a feedback. And you have any questions for Judith and this project? Okay, probably we don't have any questions now, Judith, but we will give the participants uh, your email and the other panelists' emails in order to, they can contact you directly. So thank you, Judith, for your participation. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> and our next speaker is Hugo Pagan with the project um, El App or The App. So it's your turn, Hugo. Good morning. Morning, bonjour à tous. Uh, I will wait for um, Taina to play the, the clip, please, first. Okay, computer guy. You come into a punk bar, but you don't like punk music. You've been sitting here for two hours not drinking. You either tell me what your story is or you take your fancy box of chocolates and go wait for your friend outside. In that case, I think I better drink that beer. Where are you from anyway? Dominican Republic. Dominican Republic? Isn't that by uh, Punta Cana? No, you fuck face. Punta Cana is in Dominican Republic. In a developing story last night, the notorious hacker known as Next Step told the world about an app he developed that is supposed to hack anyone's cell phone, exposing all shared media from any social network, even if they were deleted. Right now, your topic is world trending number one. Everybody's talking about it. I mean, everybody. But people are getting very pissed off about it. I mean, fucking psycho shit. Practically... Everybody wants to kill you. Is the next the dimension? Is it a tu verdad? What the fuck are you doing here? Hey, be careful now. Trust no one. You let him know what you have. It was your mistake, not mine. I've been in this neighborhood for about 30 years now. Know everybody here. A lot of people moving in, moving out. A lot of shit going on around, you know? Tienes un trastorno por estrés postraumático. Y es entendible. Tú solamente le tienes miedo al miedo. Volver a interactuar con el mundo real no va a causar una tragedia.
mundo sin secretos, sin ningún secreto, sin secretos de Estado, sin secretos de entidades de seguridad, sin secretos religiosos, el Vaticano, tu esposo, tus amigos, el vecino. Imagina vivir en un mundo en constante vulnerabilidad. Un eterno libro abierto. Todo el mundo puede leer. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Hugo Pagan. I'm head of uh, market developments for Hall Films, and we are handling sales and international distribution for the app, which is directed by one of the most awarded and renowned Dominican directors, uh, Tavare Blanchard. And the film follows uh, Jackie, which is um, a hacker, a world-renowned hacker, and he has developed his new app, which can hack anyone's information And the main subject of this high fast-paced uh, cybercrime thriller is that the information that is now in the hand of everyone is power and not the money itself, but the information. So this movie was shot on location in Boston, also in the Dominican Republic, which we used to recreate places like uh, Afghanistan, as you could see in the clip. And also we shoot at, uh, at the Pinewood Studios in the Dominican Republic. Uh, we are currently uh, in post-production for this film, and it was an original idea of the producer and main character, Jackie, which is played by Isaac Savignon, which is a well-known actor in the Dominican Republic as well. And this film is mainly um, a high-paced high thriller. And with this, we want to know that, um, that this film is how can the world be jeopardized by the information and the use of the social media and live a time like we're living now, like the world is paralyzed. So the same can do power uh, of the information. So that's the main uh, dri drive that we want to develop in the film. So if you have any questions, uh, I'll be uh, happy to answer. Thank you, Hugo. And we have uh, the teaser of this film in our chat. So if you want to see it, there is a, you can enter the chat and there is a, the link to the, to the teaser that we just uh, saw. Uh, if you have any questions, this is the time. Well, I think that there is no questions. Hugo, so thank you. Merci à tous. And our next participant today are Chris Lopez and Armando Guareño with the project El Acto Final or the Final Act. Uh, welcome, Chris and Armando. All right, thank you, Bonnie. It's just me, Christopher Lopez, for this one. Well, guys, just good morning, everyone, and good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. First off, thank you to the Dominican Film Commission for putting this together and to all of you for joining us, for taking the time to hear our sometimes unheard voices and for the opportunity to present you with our work. My name is Christopher Lopez. I am the writer, director of El Acto Final, or The Final Act. The Final Act tells the story of Martin, a world-renowned ballet dancer with a troubled and dark past who is making his grand return to dance in Santo Domingo's Teatro Nacional after a three-year absence due to the death of his wife and child. The film is a psychological thriller, though some say it leans closer to horror. Some of the coverage the screenplays received call it Black Swan meets Birdman. The screenplay is an Academy Nickel quarter finalist, a Cinequest finalist, and spent months at the top of the blacklist. The screenplay goes back to 2012. It was co-written by myself and Davi Santos, originally intended to be shot in New York. It's a big showy piece with a lot of surreal sequences, dance numbers, and sets that break away, which ultimately meant the $2.5 million budget made it prohibitive to shoot the film in the States. Last year at the Cannes Film Festival, on my never-ending journey into getting this film made, my current producer on the final act, Armando Guareño, decided to take on the project with a logistical change that the film would be shot and set in the Dominican Republic. I must say that in adjusting the script for the Dominican Republic, I found that it came alive in a way that surprised even me, which was really exciting because I've had this, been nurturing this project for almost eight years now and for it to feel so fresh, it's really incredible. 
So by setting the production in the DR, we were able to cut $1.2 million out of the original budget. And with the in-kind services we currently have for production and post-production services, we only need about $500,000 to complete our $1.3 million budget. We are seeking other producers to come on board to help complete our budget and are keen to do a co-production with Mexico and or Brazil, but are open to all possibilities. The cast we have access to right now, Davi Santos, Jacqueline Bissett, Alan Cummings, Sarah Jessica Parker are all still interested, but we would need to see what the overall production looks like in the end when the, product, when the co-productions are in place. A little bit about me, I was born in Santiago, Dominican Republic. I grew up in Queens, New York. The final act would be my third feature. My first feature, America Drift, was produced by the creator of Showtime's Dexter. Um, that's all I have for today. Thank you again for taking the time to learn more about my project. I can't recall anything that's come out of Latin America quite like the final act. I think it presents an opportunity to create a competitive, wide-reaching Caribbean art house film with an edge and feel that I think could only be done by someone from the diaspora. Thank you again. That's um, El Acto Final in a Nutshell. I'd love the opportunity to share the screenplay and deck with those of you who are interested in further considering the project. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. And I just noticed that uh, Armando Guarena is in the attendees list of this event. So the forum is open. If anyone has any question for Chris and this project, the final act or el acto final, Questions, comments, suggestions. Well, thank you, Chris, for thank being you. with us today. And our next participant is uh, Rosangela Mieses with the project Capotillo. Welcome, Rosangela. How are you? Oh, sorry. Um, I will return. Give me one minute, uh, Rosangela. I will return with Chris because we have a question for Chris. Uh, Chris, are you there? Okay. I'm here, yes. When, yes, this question is from Jim Colmar. When do you anticipate completion? Um, we're anticipating production to begin in March of next year. Okay. March 2021. Okay, thank you, Chris. Thank you. Um, yeah, this question is answered. So we will return now with Rosangela and the project uh, Capotillo. Good morning, Rosangela. Good morning. Okay. <laughs> Hi, my name is Rosangela Mieses. I am a producer at Capotillo. I got a master's degree in Spain in direction and production fiction series at Universidad Antonio de Nebrija. I have produced 10 short films, three documentaries, and two web series. Also, I have been teaching filmmaking since 2017. It is a movie, Capotillo. Helps young history, a young man that commits his fair murder at 16. When he kills a young man from the slum who tried to rape his sister, for that he served 10 years in prison. Upon he realized, he got back home, where he find out his sister had become a prostitute to support her son and Lucas, her younger brother. He frustrated John deeply, so he tried to rejoin society to have his family is when he realized how difficult it is to find a job after being in jail. John has the will to war with dignity, but he is discriminated by society due to criminal record. This pushes him into the drug business until he becomes one of the biggest drug lords in Capotillo. John's life is similar to many young to men who live in a slum in Dominican Republic, where they fight show scene. Fifteen from proceeding award in the developed category. We also have been chosen to take part in several script and project workshops, where currently in late stage of development. Capotillo is one of the most popular slums in Santo Domingo with more than 150 years of history. It's a symbol of protest and rebellion in our country. I know the subject is important because Capotillo portrays a piece of our country. 
is a story based on true event. The closest thing to our project international speaking is the movie Ciudad de Dios by Katia Lang and Fernando Mirelis. Nationality, there is a more Christo Reyes to render this project because the director and screenwriter, Ramon Javier Cartagena, was born and raised in Capotillo. In the other hand, as a producer, I have over 15 years of experience in audiovisual field and producing short film, web series, and documentary. Our plan focuses on raising nationality and internationality funds from people and organizations interested in this project. The overall budget to complete the movie is approximately $1 million. Currently, we are seeking international co-production, especially one that helps to distribute to countries of Europe Union. We're also looking for local investor to apply the article 34 for the film life of our country. People are going to get rich history full of get the world of our country. Our interesting story for an international audience. This story is in to build a future legacy about how it's lived in the slum in my country. This concludes my presentation. Those who like this history and intend to invest and cooperate with this project can contact me by email or WhatsApp. That way can schedule a virtual meeting to discuss the details. Thank you. Thank you, Rosangela. Well, you can see in the screen Rosangela's email of uh, Capotillo, the project, and as we have been doing with the other participants, now the forum is open, so if you want to make a questions or add something, let's wait a few seconds if someone is writing. Well, we don't have questions now. So thank you, Rosangela, for being with, with us, pitching your project Capotillo today. And our next uh, picture in this event is Jose Gomez. Jose will not pitch only one project. Jose has four projects. What Lords in the Shadows, Amanda, Convivencia, and the Queen of Carnival. Welcome today, Jose. Hello, hello, how are you? So, uh, my name is Jose Gomez and I am director producer from Empori Media. So today we're bringing you four projects. The first one is uh, with Lurch in the Shadows. Uh, we can pass the next, exactly, Amanda. Convivencia and the Queen of Carnival. Well, Lux in the Shadows tells the story of David, which is a landowner uh, who goes out on the hunt of his own brother, envious brother, for abusing and killing his fiancée. So when David is about to take his revenge, he realizes that his uh, mother and deceased fiancée has just come out from the dead as a Caribbean monster, which is the Ciguapa. She comes back just trying to, 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 to revenge her death. So this is, this is the, the, the next one, please. This is a horror suspense fantasy film spoken in English and Spanish. And it has the possibility of having three international actors. So let's see the teaser, please. Dana.
unmute your, your, your mic, Jose, please. Sorry. I'm sorry, I was just talking. So our next project is Amanda, and it tells the story of a woman in a very uh, male chauvinist era in the rural Dominican Republic. Amanda is trying to, to, to give importance to her rights, you know, to defend her rights as a woman, but she finds resistance and rejection on church, on uh, society, and even her own uh, husband. So she looking for that uh, redemption, for that liberation, she will have to resort to the magical religious entities. This is, uh, we can see the, the next slide, yeah. The next one. So this is a drama, suspense film, and it's spoken in Spanish. And let's see the teaser, please. Yo no me casé con una loca. Usted a mí me respeta, yo. Usted a mí me respeta. Amanda. Excellent. Let's go to the back to the to the presentation, please. So our next project is Convivencia, and uh, Convivencia. Next slide, please. Tells the story of a group of neighbors that, after the death of one of them, mysteriously death, they are all gathered by the police for interrogations. So while they are waiting for the officer in charge you know, tension and stress take over their minds and they begin accusing each other. And so they have to prove their own uh, innocence to the rest. But one of them is lying. Next slide, please. So this is a dark comedy, crime drama, uh, spoken in Spanish. And it has a good uh, uh, characteristic, which is we have a main interior, practically 97% of the film is gonna be shot in one location, interior location. Let's see the teaser, please. Ya te lo estaba armado cuando yo llegué al condominio. Conmigo no te metas, jode con ella, pero conmigo no. Entonces, a mí sí me puede acusar. No, aquí soy yo la más pendeja. Ay, ¿por qué no dice cuando te que no se meta? Usted no me acusa de lo que Claro, porque sabe que es culpable. Yo estoy segura de que usted lo hizo. Dime, yo soy inocente. Y en segundo lugar, yo no tengo ninguna Por lo menos dime dónde tú estabas. Ella tiene razón. Vamos, si nosotros tres que fuiste tú, pero ven, a hablar. Tú lo primero, hombrecito. Habla. ¿Y de qué se ríe este imbécil? Es mejor. Ellos no pueden tener algo. Yo no tengo nada que ver. Yo tampoco, yo soy inocente. Yo solo llegué y yo estaba en la policía. Cuando llegué, lo que había pasado. Oigan lo que le voy a decir a ustedes. De aquí no se va nadie. Aquí somos todos culpables hasta que se demuestre lo contrario. So back to the presentation and we have our last project, which is the Queen of Carnival. And it tells the story, we can go to the next slide. It tells the story of uh, Isabel, which is a woman that returns to her homeland with a substantial amount of money, trying to leave a dark past behind. So she arrives here and she tries to make a new future with the only pe person that she really cares for, which is her mother. But, always a but, uh, she will try in vain be, uh, to leave that past behind because it will find her right here in the middle of the heat and the chaos of the carnival festivities. So she will have to decide between her life or her mother's. Let's see the next slide. This is a drama thriller and spoken in Spanish. So let's see the proof of concept, please.
Excellent. Uh, I want to make uh, let you know that you have the links there to the teasers. On if you have question, uh, we can go to the presentation. There is my our contacts. So thank you very much for your attention. If you have any question, right here. Thank you very. Much. Um, uh, Jose, we have the first question from Tiago Santos. Hello, guys. Do most projects have central female characters? Is there a woman in the script process? Well, this is a general question, but. If you can answer this one. Yeah, I think those stories always follow me. I don't know why, but right now, for example, The Queen of Carnival, I wrote the script. Amanda, uh, the script writer, is uh, uh, Giovanni Cruz, which is a, a, a renowned uh, writer, Dominican. And uh, I don't know, it's something that came up. But we, I have very, very like, I like the, the women's story. So I think there are a lot of things to tell there. Well, thank you, Jose, for your your pitching of your four projects. And for these questions, uh, Tiago Santos is asking if uh, the, is there is a woman in the script process of all your projects that are being no. pitched today. So no, this is for, 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 for everyone of you. So the other ones that already pitched their projects, you can answer these questions in the chat. And Junior C ask if you have to choose between the four, which one will you produce first? Convivencia, which is, uh, if we talk about the situation now, it's one, one room, seven actors, giving their best there in one room. So I think it's, it's the best choice right now to, 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 to go after, you know? It's a okay. studio, it's a studio film. Yeah. So thank you, uh, Jose. Thank you. And we will have our next participant, Rodi Perez with Hotel Paraíso. Rodi, hello, good morning. Hello, thank you very much. Uh, thank you all for being part of this good uh, event. And thank you to Hesine for your uh, generosity with us. I decided to bring this film to our film law for its potential and human sense. From 2007 in Berlinal, I was funding a potential project that uh, take a part in Dominican and 80 uh, with the Dominican and 80 characters. And I found it in uh, Bradley uh, Bixler and Rajat Charman as co producer. I introduce Rajat Charman, please. Sorry. Um, I think we have a teaser that goes first. You're putting the teaser, so you, yeah, now we have it. No me hables de ese amor. que dejó sangrante ya sin vida no quiero retener su nombre en mi memoria no me supo querer ni jamás comprender no me hables de ese amor fue tanto el daño que me causó en mi vida que si llego a encontrarle para mí me es igual no me hables de ese amor ya me cerró la herida con llanto le olvidé con llanto le dejé, no me hables de ese amor. Thank you, Bonnie. Um, first of all, hi everyone. I hope you're doing well and safe and good morning, good afternoon, whatever you are. So 
before I actually tell you about the story of the film, I'd like to take you down memory lane. I want to take you back to your last beach vacation. In these times of quarantine, that sounds really good, doesn't it? Especially now. So, so let's go back to that moment when, when you land at the airport and the ocean breeze first hits your face. You get inside the taxi, maybe chat a bit with the driver, maybe about the humid weather. You check into a hotel in a nice clean room overlooking the beach. And before you know it, you're sitting on the beach, sipping an icy pina colada and working on your tan. It feels nice, doesn't it? Remembering dancing till late night in the salsa clubs, those tropical sunsets, and just how relaxed you were. Everything feels right. Now let's dig a little deeper. What do you remember about those people who were there in the background? That taxi driver who drove you to the airport? The chef who made that snapper to perfection? Or the housekeeper who made sure that your room was clean and fresh every time before you came back from the day at the beach? In the rush of our everyday lives, the people who actually make these moments happen are hidden in our memories. Hotel Paraiso is a story of uncovering one such character. Our story is based on a beachside resort in Punta Cana, and our protagonist, Emmanuel, is an illegal immigrant from Haiti who crosses the border with his family looking for home. We travel with him from a border plantation to a construction site, and finally to our hotel. Through the lens of Emmanuel, we see the choices he has to make between his own safety and what's best for his family. Bradley's story captures the fantasy of a beach resort coexisting with our protagonist's world crumbling in front of him. It's a tale of two opposite halves of the society colliding in this luxury beach resort our Hotel Paraiso. This film is inspired by the stories that Bradley's heard from his mother, who's worked for over 20 years in the tourism industry across the islands. And the fascinating stories of the immigrants that he's crossed paths with in Miami. As you saw, the film's images will be a study of contrast in the human experience of our characters versus the backdrop of this lush, beautiful tropical island. Almost something like a Wong Kar Wai or an Odiyad film that romanticizes, but yet humanizes the reality of being an immigrant. We invite you to look more on the details of the film on our website, nrbrfilms.com, and look forward to any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rajat. Uh, Rodi, you want to add something? No, for me, uh, I, I would like to see some image of our dossier uh, very quickly before the question. So we have uh, uh, aesthetical, uh, you know, concept how how the film gonna gonna see. If Bradley wanna say something about the visual style of the film, shortly. Yeah, sure. Uh, can you uh, can you guys hear me? Yep. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah, so uh, there's some visuals that kind of illustrate the, uh, I guess, the visual language, the visual grammar of the film. Uh, you'll see there's a lot of uh, shots that are dependent on natural light, um, a sort of naturalistic approach to it, very verite. Uh, we're going to shoot almost everything on location. And again, it's sort of creating, uh, I guess, a visual language that you don't necessarily often see in a in you know in all the spectrums of Caribbean cinema, so uh, yeah, these these images. I'll keep it short. These images uh, give you an idea of uh, the type of look we're going for this. Well, thank you, Bradley, Rodi, and Rajat. Uh, beautiful beach video. Clearly, there is a lot of heart and soul in this project. Curious to know about your casting process. This question is from Rizwan Shahariar Sumit. Uh, so, can I take that one? Yeah, or, yeah, Brandon, go for it. Uh, hi, uh, Reswan. Um, yeah, so the casting process right now, I mean, given it's early uh, stage right now, we're still in development. Uh, we do 
plan on working a lot with, uh, uh, you know, lo local Dominican actors, uh, our protagonists and many of our uh, lead characters are Haitian. So we will indeed be working with both uh, Haitian and Dominican talent. Uh, we are open to casting uh, high, higher profile actors, but we're also working, we're also open to working with actors who might not necessarily have as much of a high profile, you know, and I think in, 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 in that approach, uh, you might be able to attain a certain uh, level of authenticity that reflects uh, the immigrant story of an immigrant that we're trying to tell. So we're open to different avenues of casting, but I do indeed anticipate working with uh, a lot of locals that I do already know that in to some degree or another have uh, influenced the story already. Thank you, Bradley. Any other questions? We'll wait a few seconds if anyone wants to make another question. And if not, just to thank your participation. And we thank will you. continue <laughs> with our next participant, uh, Francis Disla, AKA El Indio, with three projects, green card, uh, una Familia in quarantena or a family in quarantine, and Siguapa. Uh, Indio? Hello? I'm here. You hear me? Yeah, yeah we can hear you, Indio. <laughs> yeah, just uh, Taina, allow me to, to share the screen. Okay, we will be working on that just right now. Okay. Um, hi everyone, I'm Francis Dislan, director and producer from Dominican Republic. I got three projects today, uh, which are the green car, a quarantine family, and uh, Siguapa. Most of my projects been from horror and comedy. The first one, green car, is uh, Ale, which, which is Jaime Camille, is an, a Latino immigrant who lives in New York searching for the American dream. And to achieve the green card, a housekeeper calls him, proposed him to marry just for business with her boss, Connie, a banished beautiful blondie, but is a wasp girl who hates Latino. Connie, with decks and trouble, asked to, to marry him for $30,000 because after all in the end, it's just to sign some papers. But suddenly, fate will play them a surprise when the United States, when the United States Immigration Service suspect there's been a fraud and decide to investigate the case. Frightened and nervous, Connix and Ale will search for the best immigrant lawyers in the high, Celestino, an outgoing gay who quickly will apply for the accurate solution to move together. Um, but there is any problem. It's a tiny one that is Leah, Alex's daughter, a tomboy girl who will make their life impossible. Now, Alex, Connie, and Leah must learn how to live together and understand each other while they, be, they build the perfect marriage. It's a comedy about love. It's a, a comedy about a situation comedy who happens entirely in the city of New York. The interpretation is uh, Jaime Camille, Miguel Rodarte, and, uh, and Kathleen Winnick. It all happens between Washington Heights, Brooklyn, and Manhattan. Most of the film, the 80% of the film, will take place in our studio, La Aldea, where we'll build the house and every scene. The, we've been making films like uh, Fantasma de Minovia, Killing Sarai, uh, and Leon Dolores. The interpreter are Miguel Rodarte, Andrew McCarthy, Jaime Camille, Catherine Winnick, and from Dominican Republic, Dacia Polanco, Shady Garcia as the cousin, Fausto Mata, Nani Peña, and those stuff. This, this, this project is pretend to be filming in the next year. Our next project is uh, a quarantine family. Uh, when a pandemic is, this is a serial for 13 chapter. 
Each chapter will have 45 minutes. We also produce the serials in, in La Aldea Studio, and it's a sitcom. Uh, the charters is a vertical charter where will, it will happen in different situations every day. When a pandemic suddenly surprised the world and paralyzed it, the members of this dysfunctional middle class family are forced to stay home. But the world for them is not the pandemic situation. It's having to spend time together without being remote alive. Now, Lorena Mejia, an observed controlling woman, will have to deal with the dysfunctional family. Nicole, the blogger daughter, Billy, the genius, and Alex, the technology. And of course, the father, a careless and ruthless barber that will have the craziest aventure between a prisoner home. All, all the pandemic situation of the world, all of them, will take place only to one family, the Mejia family. All the production is going to be taking place into a studio uh, around the 80%. And the production concept is like friends, like two and a half men, and La Familia production. The cast will be most Mexican, most Latin American. The third one project is a horror film called Siguapa. And the tagline is wrong because when it hears you, it'll be too late. Siguapa is when a group of dear agents on a mission in a Caribbean jungle find themselves brutally hunted by an starving cannibalic beast, a beast with high sensorial ability and neutral hunter. But a young agent from the fast team, Jack William, will live a struggle to survive starting by the avoiding being trapped, even by the hard bits. Siguapa, the tagline is when he hear you, it's just going to be too late. The production concert is like when Predator will meet Apocalypto. It's a horror film, but it's also a national film that will take place in, in what we call the jungle of Los Aitises. Uh, we, we will have at Alessandro Lewis at the tag as the Teniente Jack Williams, Michael Kennedy, Jane Lawrence, Denzel Carton, and Robinson Diaz. This is our three projects. Thank you, Francis or Indio, for your participation and your pitching. And anyone has any question for Francis and these three projects? Green card. A quarantine family and Siguapa. Well, actually, we have two projects with with Siguapas. Yours and the uh, and what works in the shadows has the Siguapa character. So, India, we don't have questions or comments, and we will give the attendees your contact if they want to make any direct con contact with you. So we will continue with our next and final participant, Halsen Santana, with the project Fronteras. Good morning, Halsen. Good morning, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Diana, we have oh, a- Halsen and Leticia Abreu. Yeah. <laughs> we have a, a video that Diana's gonna put now. Hello, my name is Leticia Brea, producer in Dominican Republic. Our fiction feature film is called Borders. It is a theme of love. Hello, my name is Halsen Santana. I am a producer and actor in Dominican Republic. What happened in Haiti after the earthquake? Well, Haiti was in chaos. There were many deaths injuries and a little food. It was not enough. It was a survival scenario. We all know this. What you don't know is hunger killed more people than the earthquake. There were more than 3,000 NGOs without any control of their functions. Long after the earthquake, 
many children disappear without explanation. Matias, a meticulous journalist, investigates the disappearances, causing his family to be killed just because he was very close to catch the guilty ones. After this, the journalist manages to find a clue that takes him to Haiti, and here he discovers that the number of disappearances was uncomfortable and that many NGOs operating there were part of an international organization that trafficked, prostituted, and sold organs throughout the world. Matias confronts the organization with very strong data. His report reaches an important newspaper that revealed many important names. We decided to make this movie because childhood is the hardest hit in the world and nobody defends them. It is a film of solidarity and hope. Our objective is go to the festival. So we have the multi-awarded Mexican director, Francisco Vargas. The film is spoken in four different languages, depending on the situation. It has Spanish, English, French, and Creole, bringing realism to the movie. The film is a thriller drama. Border is in the post-production, and we are looking for co-production to complete this stage and distribution. Thank you. Estas en los momentos un terremoto de 7 grados en la escala de Richter y de más de un minuto de duración sacudió hoy Haití. Y Maconos Films nos trae Fronteras, una historia jamás contada. A esta niña la mataron. Su cuerpo nunca llegó a la muerte. ¿Tienes caras? ¿Tienes los nombres? Aún no, pero lo vamos a conseguir. Está bien, sigamos. Tengo que ir a Haití. Eres la única persona con la que cuento. El periódico te va a apoyar. Pero necesito disciplina, profesionalismo y por favor no cometer estupideces. Una historia basada en hechos reales. ¿No es este tipo? No. ¿Quién es? Un traficante de niños. Usted ha escuchado sobre el tráfico de niños, ¿verdad? Eso es un secreto a voces. Vaya al centro de ayuda provisional. Ese es un foco por donde pasa la mayor cantidad de niños sin padres. Yo soy Jean-Pierre Sanguinel, de World in Future. Mira, yo estoy haciendo un documental sobre los niños perdidos. ¿Tú sabes algo de eso? Realmente no. Él solo quería hacer su trabajo. Pero su búsqueda tenía un precio muy alto. 10 de julio de 2013, Puerto Príncipe. La situación sigue de cabeza. Han pasado tres años después del terremoto y todo sigue igual. Los más vulnerables siguen siendo los niños. Ellos son las víctimas. ¿Y a esas niñas a dónde las llevan? Las van a trasladar. Fueron seleccionadas para adopción. ¿Qué le digo? Que los llevamos nosotros. ¿Por qué no los llevamos nosotros? No, el procedimiento no es así. Lo tenemos prohibido. Tendré que trasladar a unos niños a un paradero que ustedes desconocen. ¿Qué es lo que está ocurriendo aquí? Por esta investigación mataron a un asesino. En rojo, están todos los niños de que no supe nada después que lo llevaron. Prostitución, tráfico, venta de órganos. Ya descubrí lo que pasa con los niños huérfanos en este centro. Ya sé desde dónde operan. Alcen Santana, Jimmy John Lewis, José Sefami y Sophie Gómez. Por un reportaje, si bien le fue a un traficante de niños, asesinaron a mi hija y a su madre. Era lo único que tenía. Después de ahí nada, señor. Fronteras, una historia jamás contada. Thank you, Leticia and Halsen. You want to add something or no? No, it's okay. If anyone has any question, this is the time now. If not, I will thank, but first I will need to every panelist to turn on their camera and to come with us now. And we want to thank all the panelists, uh, Giselle, Paola, Ayerim, Judith, 
eh, Hugo Pagán, Chris López, Rosángela Mieses, eh, José Gómez, Rodi Pérez, Rajat, eh, Bradley, Francis, Disla, eh, Halsen, and Leticia Brea for being with us. Well, this, yeah, we have to, to, to question now for Leticia and Halsen, how much money are you guys looking for? This is from Paola Botero. We're looking exactly for post-production. That will depend on the co-production because it will depend on where we film it. But we already started the process of editing. We need now the color. We need music. the music. music. And we already have one trailer, but we want to make another one, depending on where we will send it, the target to be. But how much? <laughs> you have any amount projected? Uh, that will depend. Okay, so we will, uh, Paola, uh, she's the one that is, ask, is asking, Paola Botero, we will give your contact to Halsen and Leticia, and also you will have the, the, the contact of all our participants today. Uh, we remind you that in our YouTube channel, uh, the Hesine D-O, D-G-C-I-N-E-D-O, we have all the information um, on the benefits of filming in the Dominican Republic. Uh, thank you for your participation today and for your attendance uh, with us. We hope to see you soon shooting in our country, co-producing with these producers, and also distributing their films. If you have any further question, you can send it directly to the producers or to us. And if anyone wants to add something, this is the time. One of the panelists. Well, no. If not, well, thank you for being with us. And as I said, this panel will be on YouTube. So thank you and goodbye. Thank you all. Take care. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Great job. Thank you. <laughs> Au revoir. Au revoir. Au revoir. Yeah, the question.